So this is a short video just to take a quick look at how you would use a studio package that you might have received and add your own resources to it. So fairly straightforward, nothing complicated. First thing you do is open the package. You open this from within studio or by double clicking on it to create the project that you're going to work with inside studio. So I'm going to click on the open package here. Select my package. The studio package is an SDL PPX file, it stands for SDL project package. When you create a return package, that extension changes and becomes an SDL RPX, so an SDL return package. So if somebody sends you one with an RPX and you haven't given them the PPX in the first place, you probably won't be able to use it. So I select it, I click on open. This brings up the project wizard. First thing you notice in the middle here is the path to where you want to place the project, where you want the project to be created from the package. If there are files inside the package, inside the path you're pointing to to begin with, you get this little warning message saying it needs to be a new or empty folder. So I'm just going to browse here and go, um, where am I going to go? I'm going to go to this folder, which I know is empty, and I'm going to create it in there instead. The files that are in the package are just there. Click on finish, it runs through, imports the package. When I click on close, that will create the actual project for me. It switches studio to the project view, so I didn't do that, that happened automatically. And if I scroll down to the bottom, the one that's now boldened is the active project, and that's the one that's just been created from the package. And you can see there the type of project it is, is a studio package as opposed to a standard studio project, or if you created a single file project, that would say single file project, or one of them would say single file project, I don't think I have any, no, none at the moment, but it tells you what type of project it is. To work on the actual files themselves, you double click the project, and this opens up the files view where you can see the files that are available for translation. And you can then translate them either one at a time by double clicking them or clicking on open for translation, or you can select whichever ones you want. So if I hold down the control key and press this one, for example, I can now open chapter one and chapter three together as a single file if I want by clicking on open for translation, which then allows me to translate these um, as I'm working as a single file. So I was just gonna show you that quickly in case you hadn't seen that particular feature before. You can see these are very small files because I just wanted to show you the, how, how this worked, but they're separated by the orange tab. So that's two files open together as a single file. So come back to where I got to. What I want to show you now, we've got the file of the, the project set up and your files are available and you know how to translate them or open them for review or sign off depending on, on what it is you're doing. If you want to add your own translation memory or your own term base, you click on the project settings you have to go to the project settings because this allows you to change the setup for the specific project you're in. If you change the settings or add your translation memory or term base under tools options, I'll just show you what it is, under file, file options, sorry I should say, if you change it under here instead and add things under this, it will make no difference whatsoever to this existing project. So you need to change it under the project settings. So I'm gonna to go to my language pairs And you can see that I've already got one translation memory in here. Now this clearly has come from the project package. So this, this included a project translation memory. Sorry, I'm gonna confuse you there now. This included a main translation memory. It's just called project 28871. If it was a project translation memory, it would have a little dotted line under here like this, leading out from it and it would be a project, what's, what Studio calls a project TM, which is a little different to a main TM, but basically works the same way. But anyway, so if I want to add my own translation memory to this, I click on Add, File-Based Translation Memory, and then just select my translation memory. It now adds my translation memory to the project. I can add as many as I like here. The things to watch out for are that it's enabled, and that you're going to update it because presumably if you add your own TM it's because you want to update your work to it so you need to check it and make sure that it is checked if you don't want to bother updating the project TM that came with it or the translation memory that came with it and you just want to use it for concordance and lookup you could uncheck that or you could check, leave it checked and update them both so that's how you would add 
you would do your own translation memory. If you wanted to add your own turn base, it's the same kind of process. So you would click on the turn bases, and you can see I've already got a turn base in there because again, it's possible to include a turn base with a package. Doesn't always happen, but in this case it has. So I can add browse to my turn base, and I'm going to add my glossary. Click on OK, and that's now added my glossary. So I now have both translation, uh, both turn bases in there. The one thing to note here is that when you add terms, you can only add to one turn base at a time, which is different to the translation memories. So if you want to add the terms to your own turn base, then set it as the default. We'll go to the top and that will become the default. So now when you add terms, they'll get added to your own turn base, but the lookups will come from both. If you wanted to be able to add terms to a turn base, to add to both of these turn bases at the end of the day, then it's probably worth creating a project turn base and only adding to the project turn base. And then at the end of the project, export it and then import it into, into, into both of the other two into both of the other turn bases. Gives you a chance to check it up, to, to tidy it up and make sure it's correct before you add it, add it anyway, which is quite a, a good way to work. So just one quick tip if you wanted to do that. When I click on the projects view, you see I have this little thing here called project glossaries. This is a, a free plugin on the Open Exchange. And if I just wanted to, to create a, um, a quick project turn base, I could just click do that, click OK. And I've now added that. So if I click on my project settings, when well, that's finished, you'll see that I've now got a third one there. So I could actually make that the default if I wanted to. So everything I add goes to this separate project turn base, and then I can export it afterwards, make sure it's what I want, um, and then import it into my other two turn bases. There's a number of ways that you could tackle that. Anyway, that's a slight aside. Once I've finished the work, if I want to create a return package, I could do that for the whole project in one go by clicking on the projects view, and then clicking on create return package up here. Or I can right click the project and say, create return package down here. But if I want to send them back one file at a time, perhaps I've been given 100 files and they've asked me to send them back in batches of 10 or something, you can do that too. So you can select the files you want to send back. So let's assume I finished these two and I wanted to send those back. So I held the control key down there to select the third one separately. I can then do the same thing, create the return package with that icon there, or I can right click create return package. You can see the three, uh, the two files are, have been um, selected. The other way to do that actually is on the projects, if you just create a return package from the projects view, you can do a similar thing there. Because the files are all there, I can uncheck the ones I don't want. So you could do it that way too. So I click on next. It will then ask you to specify the path where this is going to go. So I'm going to put this into, let's just leave that name of it there. And I'll add my path to where I want it to go in. I could have browsed to do that and then just click on finish. That will create the, um, the return package for me. If for some reason I've forgotten where it went, I could actually say open the target folder up at this point, and that will then open the folder, open the folder where the file actually is. Or it should do. Don't know, oh, there we go. Don't know why that took so long. Okay, and so now I can see there's my return package inside the multivarious folder that I just created. So you can always find it easily enough and I could actually just click on send package by email which allows me to then <coughs> automatically email it. I think that only works with Outlook though. So I close at that point and I'm ready to go. That's my return package created and you can create as many return packages as you like. Um, what else can I tell you about working with these? That's about it. It's fairly straightforward, simple to do and I hope that helps.